The absolute monarchy in Spain was started with Ferdinand and Isabella. Their religious seal ruled the country, and this continued straight through, especially during Philip II's reign. Philip exercised his rule with a strong hand as most absolute monarchs did. After his first wife, Mary, died, his goal was to ensure that England was Catholic by attempting to marry Elizabeth I, but she declined. After Philip's proposal, Elizabeth made the Church of England Protestant, but allowed Catholicism. This greatly angered Philip II. Yeah. Philip was already being faced with rebellion in the Netherlands, but to face challenges of both England and the Netherlands, he organized an armada to send to England that would be forever known as the Spanish Armada. Spaniard army performed best on land, so Philip needed his armada to pick up the majority of his troops in the Netherlands. The only problem was, the English naval fleet outsmarted the Spaniards. While all of this conflict was happening between England and Spain, France was having their own problems. There were tensions between Catholics and Huguenots over which religion should rule the state. When Henry IV became king, he created the Edict of Nantes, which allowed religious tolerance for the Protestants, but ensured that Catholicism was the official religion of France. When Louis XIV took the throne, he revoked the Edict of Nantes, demonstrating even more absolute power. Louis also exercised more control by building the Palace of Versailles outside of Paris and forcing nobles to live there, which weakened the nobles' authority. Louis XIV exercised his absolute power by building the Palace of Versailles. He used the money he inherited by becoming King of France in order to build it. This is the palace as it was in 1668. It was here he forced nobles to live to prevent them from rebelling against him as they had against previous kings. After Louis's time in Russia rose Peter the Great. In Russia, Peter the Great exercised his power by bringing the Orthodox Church under state control and expanding serfdom. 
The time period after Peter the Great came the rule of Maria Theresa in Austria. It was unusual that a woman was allowed to rule, so when Maria Theresa became the ruler of Austria, there was a lot of controversy. She used her authority to attempt to transform her empire into a modern state and create positive diplomacy. She reorganized her tax structure to ensure a predictable amount of income into a centralized office. Frederick the Great of Prussia had a problem with Maria Theresa. With his skill and power, he created a strong aggressive military through taxation so as to begin the War of Austrian Succession in 1740 through 1748. When Maria's husband died, she made her son her corrigent or partner in throne. After she died, he took over and used his power to continue her reforms. He supported religious tolerance and created the Edict of Tolerance in 1781, granting almost equal status to Protestants, Catholics, and Jews. After the dynasty of the Holy Roman Empire, the rule of Maria and Joseph, came another woman who rose back to power in Russia. Peter the Great's grandson married Catherine the Great, who became the new ruler of Russia after Peter the Great's grandson died. She based all of the changes made on the studies of French philosophers and on the Enlightenment and continued to control the church. Russian resistance to her foreign ideas forced her to adopt an absolutist belief, making her a true absolute monarch. These absolute monarchs of Europe showed their power through the control of religion, taxation, and or military systems. These characteristics and events surrounding their monarchies contribute to the creation of a defined idea of an absolute monarch.